Welcome to our video on basic circuit elements. In this video, we will explore various electronic components and their symbols commonly used in circuit diagrams. Understanding these symbols is essential for anyone interested in electronics or circuit design. So, let's dive right in. Resistor The first component we'll discuss is the resistor. It is one of the most fundamental elements in electronic circuits. Resistor symbols are represented by a zigzag line. Resistors are used to limit or control the flow of electric current in a circuit. They come in different resistance values, measured in ohms. Inductor Next, we have the inductor. Its symbol resembles a coil or a spring. Inductors store energy in the form of a magnetic field when current flows through them. They resist changes in current, making them useful in applications such as filters, transformers, and energy storage devices. Capacitor The capacitor, represented by two parallel lines, is another vital component. Capacitors store and release electrical energy. They consist of two conducting plates separated by an insulating material called a dielectric. Capacitors are commonly used in timing circuits, filters, and energy storage applications. Battery Now let's move on to the battery symbol. It represents a power source in a circuit. Batteries provide a steady voltage to power electronic devices. The positive terminal is typically marked with a longer line or a plus sign, plus, while the negative terminal is represented by a shorter line or a minus sign, dot. Ground The ground symbol is used to represent the reference point in a circuit. It serves as a common return path for electric current. Ground symbols are typically depicted as a horizontal line with three downward pointing lines branching out. Connecting components to the ground helps maintain stable and safe circuit operation. Switch A switch symbol resembles a simple break in a circuit line. It represents a device that can open or close a circuit, allowing or blocking the flow of current. Switches are used to control the operation of various electrical devices. AC Voltage Source When dealing with alternating current AC circuits, we use an AC voltage source symbol. It represents a source that generates alternating current. The symbol usually consists of a circle with a wavy line inside, indicating the sinusoidal nature of AC voltage. Transistor NPN A transistor is a semiconductor device that amplifies or switches electronic signals. The NPN, negative positive negative, transistor symbol consists of two outward pointing arrows, representing the flow of current. Transistors are crucial in modern electronics for amplification, switching, and digital logic applications. Diode The diode symbol features a triangle pointing toward a vertical line. Diodes allow current to flow in one direction while blocking it in the opposite direction. They are used for rectification, signal demodulation, and voltage regulation purposes. Zener Diode Similar to the standard diode, the Zener diode symbol includes a triangle pointing towards a vertical line. Zener diodes are specifically designed to maintain a constant voltage across their terminals, even when the current changes. They are commonly used for voltage regulation and protection against voltage spikes. SCR, Silicon Controlled Rectifier The SCR symbol represents a silicon controlled rectifier. It is a type of semiconductor device used for controlling high power circuits. The symbol typically consists of three layers with an additional gate terminal. SCRs are commonly employed in motor control, lighting dimmers, and power supply applications. DIAC, diode for alternating current. The DIAC symbol consists of two diodes facing each other, sharing a common terminal. It is a bidirectional semiconductor device that can conduct current in both directions when triggered. Diacs are used in applications such as triggering triacs, controlling power levels in AC circuits, and generating timing signals. TRIAC, triode for alternating current. The TRIAC symbol combines elements of a transistor and a diode. It is a three-terminal device that can conduct current in both directions when triggered. 
Triacs are widely used in AC power control applications, such as dimmer switches and motor speed control. Current source. The current source symbol represents a device or circuit that provides a constant current regardless of the load connected to it. It is often depicted as a circle with an arrow inside, indicating the direction of the constant current flow. Current sources are commonly used in various applications, including biasing circuits and sensor systems. Transformer The transformer symbol represents a device used for transferring electrical energy between two or more circuits through electromagnetic induction. It consists of two coils, often depicted as primary and secondary windings. Transformers are crucial for voltage transformation, impedance matching, and isolation in power distribution and electronic systems. And there you have it. We've covered the symbols and brief explanations of several basic circuit elements. Remember, understanding these symbols is key to interpreting circuit diagrams and designing electronic systems. We hope this video has provided you with a solid foundation in recognizing and comprehending these fundamental components. Thank you for watching, and happy circuit designing! Hello everyone, welcome to today's video where we will be diving into the fascinating world of electric current. Specifically, we will explore the difference between conventional current and electron flow, and how these concepts relate to the movement of charge in an electrical circuit. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of these concepts and be able to distinguish between them effectively. So, let's jump right in. Electric current refers to the flow of electric charge through a conductor. In simpler terms, it is the movement of charged particles from one point to another. In our demonstration, we have set up a basic circuit consisting of a 5-volt battery connected to a 1 kilohm resistor. This setup will help us visualize and understand the flow of current. Conventional current flow in the early days of studying electricity, scientists established a convention for the direction of current flow, known as conventional current. According to this convention, current flows from the positive terminal of a battery or power source to the negative terminal. It was initially believed that positive charges were responsible for the flow of current, hence the chosen direction of conventional current. Electron flow direction. However, through further scientific investigation, it was discovered that in most conductors, electric current is actually carried by negatively charged particles called electrons. These electrons flow from the negative terminal of the power source to the positive terminal. This means that the real direction of electron flow is opposite to that of conventional current. Why the difference in direction? The difference in direction between conventional current and electron flow arises from the historical development of the concept of electricity. When early scientists were exploring electricity, they did not have a complete understanding of the nature of electric charges. They observed that certain materials, when rubbed, exhibited a phenomenon known as static electricity. This led to the identification of positive and negative charges. Later, when scientists started investigating electric circuits, they observed that the flow of current in conductive materials followed a specific direction. At that time, they did not know about the existence of electrons. Hence, they made the assumption that current was composed of positive charges moving from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. This convention was established and became known as conventional current. However, as further experiments and research were conducted, it was discovered that electrons, which are negatively charged, were the actual carriers of electric current in most conductive materials. Electrons are more mobile and can easily move through the lattice structure of conductors. This understanding of electron flow and its direction, from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, came to light. To avoid confusion, it is important to keep in mind that conventional current and electron flow have opposite directions. Conventional current represents the flow of positive charges, which is opposite to the actual movement of electrons, and is used in circuit diagrams and most electrical conventions. Electron flow represents the actual movement of negatively charged electrons, which is from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Charge and Current Relationships To understand electric current more deeply, let's explore the relationship between charge and current. 
Charge, denoted by the symbol Q, is the fundamental property of matter responsible for electrical interactions. It is measured in coulombs, C. Current, denoted by the symbol I, is the rate at which charge flows through a conductor and is measured in amperes, A. The relationship between charge and current is given by the equation I is equal to dQ by dt, where dQ represents a small amount of charge and dt represents a small amount of time. Defining the ampere. 1 ampere is defined as 1 coulomb of charge flowing per second. In other words, if 1 coulomb of charge passes through a specific point in a circuit in 1 second, the current flowing through that point is 1 ampere. The ampere is a standard unit for measuring electric current and is widely used in electrical systems and devices. Integration of current. To determine the total charge passing through a circuit over a specific period of time, we utilize the concept of integration. Integration involves summing up small amounts of current over infinitesimally small time intervals. The resulting sum provides the total charge flowing through the circuit during that time period. Mathematically, we express this relationship as Q is equal to integral of I dt, where Q represents the total charge, I denotes the current, and the integral symbol indicates the process of integration. Relationship between coulombs and electrons. Lastly, it is important to establish a relationship between coulombs, the unit of charge, and electrons, the charged particles involved in the flow of electric current. 1 coulomb of charge is equivalent to 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 electrons. This conversion factor allows us to comprehend the immense number of electrons involved in even the smallest amounts of charge. It highlights the tiny but incredibly numerous carriers of charge within a conductor. Conclusion To summarize, electric current is the flow of electric charge through a conductor. We have explored the difference between conventional current and electron flow, understanding that conventional current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, while electrons actually flow in the opposite direction. We have also examined the relationship between charge and current, defined the ampere as the unit of current, discussed the integration of current to calculate total charge, and established the conversion factor between coulombs and electrons. These concepts are fundamental to comprehending the behavior of electric circuits. I hope this detailed explanation has clarified any confusion and provided you with a solid understanding of electric current. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Introduction Hello everyone. Today, we're diving into the captivating realm of electric current as we explore the distinctions between direct current, DC, and alternating current, AC. We'll take a closer look at how these two types of current function within a circuit and highlight their fundamental dissimilarities. So, let's embark on this enlightening journey. DC circuit. Let's commence by examining a DC circuit. In this scenario, we have a simple setup comprising a 5 volt battery connected in series with a 5 ohm resistor. When a DC voltage source is introduced to a circuit, the flow of electric charge is unidirectional, meaning the current flows in one constant direction. To comprehend DC circuits, we rely on Ohm's law, a crucial principle in electrical engineering. Ohm's law states that the current, I, is equivalent to the voltage, V, divided by the resistance, R. In our case, with a 5 volt battery and a 5 ohm resistor, we can calculate the current as follows I is equal to V by R is equal to 5 by 5 is equal to 1 ampere, A. This means that a steady current of 1 ampere flows through the circuit. AC circuit. Now, let's shift our focus to an AC circuit. In this instance, we have a 5 volt AC voltage source with a frequency of 40 Hz connected in series with the same 5 ohm resistor. Unlike DC, where the current flows consistently in one direction, AC current oscillates back and forth in a cyclic manner, continually altering its direction. When dealing with AC circuits, we introduce a few concepts to comprehend their behavior. The angular frequency, omega, is defined as 2 pi multiplied by the frequency, f. In our case, omega is equal to 2 pi times 40 is equal to 80 pi radians per second. 
To describe the voltage across the resistor at any given time, T, we use the equation V, T, is equal to Vm sin, omega T, where Vm represents the peak voltage. Similarly, the current flowing through the circuit can be expressed as I, T, is equal to M sin, omega T, where M represents the peak current. However, when discussing AC circuits, we often refer to the effective or RMS, root mean square, value of the current, denoted as I effective. This value is approximately equal to 0.707 times the maximum current, IMAX. So, the effective current provides a meaningful representation of the average current magnitude. Key takeaways. So, to summarize, in a DC circuit, the current flows in one constant direction, while in an AC circuit, it alternates its direction periodically. In a DC circuit, we apply Ohm's law to determine the current based on the voltage and resistance. In an AC circuit, we consider the angular frequency and employ equations involving sine functions to represent the voltage and current at any given time. It's important to note that AC power transmission is more commonly used for long-distance transmission. This is because AC can be easily transformed to higher or lower voltages using transformers, whereas DC power transmission encounters more significant challenges in this regard. Understanding the distinctions between DC and AC current is vital for comprehending the operation of electrical systems and the devices we encounter daily. Whether it's the batteries in our portable electronics that provide DC power or the AC power that flows through the wall sockets in our homes, grasping the characteristics of each type of current helps us appreciate the underlying principles of electricity. Conclusion And there you have it. We've delved into the differences between direct current, DC, and alternating current, AC. We've witnessed how DC current maintains a constant flow in one direction, while AC current oscillates back end. Fourth, we've explored Ohm's law in the context of DC circuits and introduced the concepts of angular frequency, voltage, and current in AC circuits. By comprehending these fundamental principles, we gain a deeper understanding of how electricity behaves in various applications, ranging from small electronic devices to large-scale power transmission systems. I hope this comprehensive explanation has provided you with valuable insights into the intriguing world of electric current. Thank you for joining me on this educational adventure. Welcome to this comprehensive video on voltage, where we will delve into the fundamental concept of voltage, its significance in electrical circuits, and how it influences the behavior of components. Voltage, denoted by the symbol V and measured in volts, V, is an essential aspect of electricity that drives the movement of electric charges and the flow of current. In our demonstration setup, we have a 5-volt voltage source connected to a 5-ohm resistor and a scope. This setup will help us visualize and analyze the voltage across the resistor and gain insights into its characteristics. Voltage, in its simplest terms, can be likened to the force or pressure that propels electric charges through a conductor, such as a wire. It represents the electric potential difference between two points in a circuit. The greater the voltage, the more potential energy the charges possess, and the stronger the force driving them. The concept of voltage is closely intertwined with Ohm's law, a fundamental principle in electrical engineering. Ohm's law states that the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the voltage across it and inversely proportional to its resistance. In our setup, the 5 ohm resistor restricts the flow of current, creating a predictable relationship between voltage and current. Now, let's observe the voltage across the resistor using the scope. The scope allows us to visualize the voltage waveform and provides valuable information about its magnitude, frequency, and any fluctuations that may occur over time. As we connect the scope to the circuit, we can see that when the 5 volt voltage source is applied, the voltage across the resistor will also be 5 volts. This is because, in a simple series circuit like ours, the sum of the voltage drops across each component, in this case, only the resistor, must equal the total voltage provided by the source. It is important to note that the resistor, being a passive component, does not generate or consume energy but rather dissipates it in the form of heat. This dissipation occurs due to the interaction between the flowing current and the resistance offered by the resistor. By adjusting either the resistance or the voltage of the source, 
we can observe how it impacts the voltage across the resistor. Increasing the resistance value will impede the flow of current, resulting in a larger voltage drop. Conversely, if we increase the voltage of the source, we will observe a higher voltage across the resistor. Understanding voltage is of paramount importance in electrical circuit design and analysis. It enables us to predict and control the behavior of components, ensuring they operate within their specified voltage limits. This knowledge allows engineers to design circuits that are safe, efficient, and reliable. To summarize, voltage serves as the driving force behind the flow of electric charges in a circuit. Through our demonstration of a 5-volt voltage source connected to a 5-ohm resistor and using a scope to visualize the voltage, we have explored the relationship between voltage and resistance. It is an exciting journey into the world of voltage, where we uncover the principles that underpin the functioning of countless electrical systems. Thank you for watching this video on voltage. We hope you found it informative and insightful. Stay curious, keep exploring, and happy experimenting! Introduction Welcome to our exciting video on the concept of power. In this demonstration, we will explore the fundamental principles of power in electrical circuits. We have set up a simple circuit comprising a 5-volt voltage source connected to a 5-ohm resistor. To help us visualize the effects, we will be using a scope to observe the electrical signals. So, let's delve into the captivating world of power. Explanation of Voltage and Resistance Before we dive into power, let's take a moment to understand two essential elements of our circuit, voltage and resistance. Voltage, measured in volts, V, represents the potential difference between two points in an electrical circuit. In our setup, the 5-volt voltage source provides a fixed potential difference across our circuit, driving the flow of electrons. Resistance, measured in ohms, is a property that opposes the flow of electrical current. It is determined by the characteristics of the components in the circuit. In our case, the 5-ohm resistor restricts the amount of current that can flow through the circuit. As a result, the resistor plays a significant role in determining the behavior of our circuit. Introduction to Power Now, let's move on to power. Power, measured in watts, W, is a fundamental concept in electrical engineering. It quantifies the rate at which electrical energy is converted or dissipated in a circuit. In other words, power tells us how quickly work is being done or how rapidly energy is being transferred. The Power Formula To calculate the power in a circuit, we use the formula P equals VI, where P represents power, V represents voltage, and I represents current. The relationship between power, voltage, and current is crucial to understanding how electrical energy is transformed within a circuit. In our setup, the current flowing through the circuit can be determined using Ohm's law, I equals V slash R, where R represents the resistance. By substituting the value of current into the power formula, we can calculate the power dissipated by the resistor. Power Calculation Now, let's perform the power calculation for our circuit. Given that our voltage source provides 5 volts and the resistance is 5 ohms, we can use Ohm's law to find the current flowing through the circuit. By dividing the voltage, 5V, by the resistance, 5 ohms, we obtain a current of 1 ampere, A. Next, we substitute the current value into the power formula P equals 5V asterisk 1A equals 5W. Therefore, our 5 ohm resistor dissipates 5 watts of power. This means that for every second, 5 joules of electrical energy are being converted or dissipated as heat in the resistor. Visualizing power on the scope. To gain a visual understanding of power, we will use a scope to examine the voltage and current waveforms across the resistor. The scope allows us to observe how the voltage and current values change over time, providing insights into the fluctuations of power. As we connect the circuit and observe the scope, we can witness the voltage and current waveforms aligning with each other, reflecting the power fluctuations. By analyzing these waveforms, we can gain a deeper understanding of how power varies dynamically within an electrical circuit. Conclusion In conclusion, 
we have explored the concept of power in electrical circuits. We have learned about voltage, resistance, and their relationship to power. Through our demonstration, we calculated the power dissipated by a 5 ohm resistor connected to a 5 volt voltage source. We also visualized the voltage and current waveforms using a scope, providing a tangible representation of power fluctuations. Understanding power is vital for designing and analyzing electrical systems. It allows us to optimize efficiency, ensure safety, and make informed decisions in various applications. We hope this video has provided you with valuable insights into the fascinating world of power in electrical circuits. Thank you for watching and stay curious. Welcome to our video on passive circuit elements and active circuit elements. In this video, we will explore the fundamental components that make up electronic circuits and their roles in shaping the flow of electricity. We will delve into the world of passive circuit elements such as resistors, inductors, capacitors, transformers, switches, fuses, and thermistors. Additionally, we will uncover the realm of active circuit elements including batteries, diodes, Zener diodes, SCR, DIAC, triac, current sources, AC voltage sources, transistors, NPN, op amps, NMOSFETS, varactors, triodes, and NJFETS. So let's dive in and unravel the mysteries behind these essential building blocks of electronic systems. Passive Circuit Elements Resistor A resistor is an electronic component that restricts the flow of electric current in a circuit. It is represented by a zigzag line in circuit diagrams. The value of a resistor is measured in ohms and determines the amount of resistance it provides to the current. Inductor, an inductor is a passive component that stores energy in the form of a magnetic field when current flows through it. It resists changes in current flow. In circuit diagrams, an inductor is represented by a coil or a series of loops. Capacitor, a capacitor is a passive component that stores electrical energy in an electric field. It consists of two conductive plates separated by an insulating material called a dielectric. Capacitors are used to store and release electrical energy in circuits. They are represented by parallel lines in circuit diagrams. Transformer A transformer is a passive electrical device that transfers electrical energy between two or more circuits through electromagnetic induction. It consists of two or more coils of wire, windings, and is used to step up or step down voltage levels. Transformers are often represented by two coils with a shared magnetic core in circuit diagrams. Switch A switch is an electrical component that can open or close a circuit, allowing or interrupting the flow of current. It is represented by a simple line with a gap that can be closed or connected. Fuse A fuse is a protective device used in electrical circuits to prevent damage from excessive current. It consists of a thin wire that melts and breaks the circuit when the current exceeds a certain threshold. Fuses are represented by a squiggly line in circuit diagrams. Thermistor A thermistor is a type of resistor whose resistance changes with temperature. It is used to measure and control temperature in electronic circuits. Thermistors can be either positive temperature coefficient, PTC, or negative temperature coefficient, NTC, devices. Active Circuit Elements Battery A battery is a device that converts chemical energy into electrical energy. It provides a constant voltage source in a circuit, allowing a continuous flow of current. The positive terminal is represented by a longer line, and the negative terminal is represented by a shorter line. Diode A diode is a semiconductor device that allows current to flow in only one direction. It acts as a one-way valve for electric current. Diodes are represented by a triangle pointing towards the direction of current flow in circuit diagrams. Zener diode A Zener diode is a specialized type of diode that is designed to operate in the reverse breakdown region. It is used for voltage regulation and protection against voltage spikes. Zener diodes are represented similarly to regular diodes, but with a bent line on the cathode side. SCR, Silicon Controlled Rectifier and SCR is a four-layer solid-state device that acts as a switch, allowing current to flow in one direction when a control signal is applied. 
It is widely used in power control applications. SCRs are represented by three stack layers with a control terminal. DIAC diode for alternating current A DIAC is a two-terminal device that conducts current in both directions when a certain voltage threshold is reached. It is often used in triggering triacs and other devices in AC circuits. Diacs are represented by two diodes connected back-to-back. Triac, a triac is a three-terminal semiconductor device that can conduct current in both directions. It is often used for controlling AC power to devices such as dimmer switches and motor speed controllers. Triacs are represented by two back-to-back -back SCRs sharing a common terminal. Current source, a current source is an active component that provides a constant current output, regardless of changes in the circuit parameters or load. It is represented by a circle with an arrow pointing inward or outward, indicating the direction of current flow. AC voltage source, an AC voltage source is a device that generates an alternating current AC signal with a specific voltage and frequency. It is represented by a sine wave or a circle with a squiggly line inside, indicating an AC signal. Transistor, NPN A transistor is a three-terminal semiconductor device used for amplification and switching applications. An NPN transistor is one type of bipolar junction transistor, BJT, where the majority current carriers are negative charge carriers, electrons. It is represented by three layers with an arrow pointing inward on the emitter side. Op amp, operational amplifier and operational amplifier is a high gain voltage amplifier with differential inputs and a single output. It is widely used in signal processing and amplification circuits. Op amps are represented by a triangle with two input terminals and one output terminal. N MOSFET, a N MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, is a type of field effect transistor where the majority charge carriers are negative charge carriers, electrons. It is widely used in digital and analog circuits. NMOSFETS are represented by three layers with an arrow pointing outward on the source side. Varactor, a varactor, also known as a varicap diode, is a type of diode that exhibits a variable capacitance depending on the applied voltage. It is used for tuning and frequency control in electronic circuits. Varactors are represented similarly to regular diodes, but with two curved lines on the cathode side. Triode, a triode is an electronic vacuum tube or valve with three electrodes, a cathode, a control grid, and an anode. It can be used as an amplifier or an electronic switch. Triodes are represented by three lines connected to the cathode, control grid, and anode. NJFET, N-channel junction field effect transistor and NJFET is a type of field effect transistor where the majority charge carriers are negative charge carriers, electrons. It is used for amplification and switching applications. NJFETS are represented by a line with an arrow pointing inward on the source side. And there you have it, an in-depth exploration of passive circuit elements and active circuit elements. We've covered a wide range of components, from resistors and capacitors to transistors and op-amps, each playing a crucial role in electronic circuits. Understanding these elements is vital for any electronics enthusiast or aspiring engineer. We hope this video has provided you with valuable insights into the world of circuit components and their functionalities. Feel free to explore further and experiment with these elements to create your own innovative electronic designs. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone, and welcome to this video where we will delve into the fascinating world of electrical sources. In particular, we will explore the two main types, voltage sources and current sources. By understanding the classification of these sources, we can gain a deeper understanding of their behavior in circuits. So, let's dive in. First, let's focus on voltage sources. These are devices that provide a fixed potential difference or voltage across their terminals. In other words, they supply electrical energy in the form of voltage. Voltage sources can be further classified into two main branches, independent and dependent sources. Independent voltage sources are not influenced by any other element in the circuit. 
They are self-contained and provide a constant voltage regardless of the current flowing through them. Within the realm of independent voltage sources, we can distinguish between ideal and practical sources. Ideal voltage sources, often represented as ideal batteries, are theoretical constructs used for analysis and circuit design. They are characterized by their ability to provide a specific voltage without any internal resistance or limitations. This means that ideal voltage sources can maintain a constant voltage regardless of the load or current drawn from them. On the other hand, practical voltage sources, such as real batteries or power supplies, have some internal resistance and limitations. In the real world, no source is perfectly ideal. Practical voltage sources may exhibit slight voltage variations depending on the load or current drawn from them. These sources are commonly encountered in electronic devices and power systems. Now, let's move on to dependent voltage sources. Unlike independent sources, dependent voltage sources are controlled or influenced by another element in the circuit, such as a current or voltage. Dependent voltage sources can be further classified into two types, current-controlled voltage sources and voltage-controlled voltage sources. A current-controlled voltage source adjusts its output voltage based on the current flowing through a controlling element in the circuit. As the controlling current changes, the output voltage of the dependent source varies proportionally. This type of source is often used in amplifiers and other applications where voltage needs to be controlled based on the current. Similarly, a voltage-controlled voltage source modifies its output voltage based on the voltage across a controlling element in the circuit. As the controlling voltage fluctuates, the output voltage of the dependent source changes accordingly. This type of source is commonly employed in feedback circuits, where the output voltage is adjusted based on an input voltage. Now, let's shift our focus to current sources. Unlike voltage sources, current sources provide a fixed current through their terminals. They are devices that deliver electrical energy in the form of a constant current. Similar to voltage sources, current sources can be categorized into independent and dependent sources. Independent current sources, just like their voltage counterparts, are not influenced by other elements in the circuit. They maintain a constant current regardless of the voltage applied across them. We can further differentiate independent current sources into ideal and practical sources. Ideal current sources generate a specific current without any internal resistance. They are theoretical constructs used for analysis and circuit design. Ideal current sources maintain a constant current regardless of the voltage applied across them. On the other hand, practical current sources, encountered in real-world scenarios, possess some internal resistance and have limitations. The current they provide may slightly vary depending on the voltage applied. These sources are commonly used in electronic circuits, power systems, and various applications where a constant current is required. Lastly, let's explore dependent current sources. These sources are controlled by other elements in the circuit, such as a current or voltage. Dependent current sources can be further classified into two types, current-controlled current sources and voltage-controlled current sources. A current-controlled current source adjusts its output current based on the current flowing through a controlling element. As the controlling current changes, the output current of the dependent source varies proportionally. This type of source is often employed in applications where the output current needs to be controlled based on the current flowing through a specific part of the circuit. Similarly, a voltage-controlled current source modifies its output current based on the voltage across a controlling element. As the controlling voltage fluctuates, the output current of the dependent source changes accordingly. This type of source is commonly used in electronic circuits and systems where precise current control is necessary. By understanding the various types of voltage sources and current sources, along with their classifications into independent and dependent categories, we gain valuable insights into the behavior and characteristics of these sources in electrical circuits. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found this detailed explanation helpful. If you have any further questions or need clarification, please feel free to ask in the comments section below. Hello and welcome to our video on independent voltage sources. 
Today, we will explore the ideal voltage source and the practical voltage source, highlighting their important characteristics. Let's begin. Ideal voltage source. An ideal voltage source is a theoretical concept commonly used in circuit analysis to simplify calculations and understand basic principles. It is considered ideal because it provides a constant voltage, V, across its terminals, regardless of the current flowing through it. Additionally, an ideal voltage source has zero internal resistance, Rs. In the characteristics graph of an ideal voltage source, we plot the current, I, along the x-axis and the terminal voltage, Vt, along the y-axis. Since the internal resistance is zero, the terminal voltage remains constant regardless of the current flowing through the source. This means that no matter how much current is drawn from the ideal voltage source, the voltage across its terminals remains exactly the same. Visually, the characteristics graph of an ideal voltage source appears as a perfectly vertical line. This line indicates that the terminal voltage, Vt, is constant and unaffected by the current, I. It implies that the ideal voltage source can provide an infinite amount of current while maintaining a steady voltage across its terminals. Practical Voltage Source In real-world applications, voltage sources often exhibit some level of internal resistance, Rs, due to various factors such as the construction of the source and the nature of the materials used. Therefore, we consider a practical voltage source that includes the internal resistance. When plotting the characteristics of a practical voltage source, we again use the current, I, along the x-axis and the terminal voltage, Vt, along the y-axis. However, this time, we observe a different behavior compared to the ideal voltage source. As the current flowing through the practical voltage source increases, there is a voltage drop across its internal resistance, Rs. This voltage drop is a result of the resistance dissipating some of the energy as heat. Consequently, the terminal voltage, Vt, decreases slightly as the current increases. The relationship between the current and terminal voltage in a practical voltage source is represented by a sloping line on the characteristics graph. The slope of this line indicates the internal resistance, Rs, of the practical voltage source. A steeper slope corresponds to a higher internal resistance, meaning that the terminal voltage drops more significantly as the current increases. It's important to note that even though the terminal voltage decreases with increasing current in a practical voltage source, it still remains relatively stable within a certain range. The decrease is typically small and depends on the internal resistance of the source. By considering the internal resistance, the characteristics graph of a practical voltage source provides a more realistic representation of its behavior in real-world circuits. And that concludes our exploration of the ideal and practical voltage sources. We've learned that while an ideal voltage source is a theoretical concept with zero internal resistance and a constant terminal voltage, practical voltage sources have internal resistance that causes a slight decrease in the terminal voltage as the current increases. Understanding the characteristics of these voltage sources is crucial in circuit analysis and design, as it allows us to account for the real-world behavior of electrical components and systems. We hope this video has provided you with a clear understanding of the ideal and practical voltage sources and their respective characteristics. Remember to consider these factors when designing and analyzing circuits to ensure accurate and reliable results. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more educational videos on electrical engineering concepts. Welcome to our comprehensive video on independent current sources. In this tutorial, we will delve into the characteristics of both ideal and practical current sources, shedding light on their behavior and practical applications. Let's kick things off by examining the ideal current source. An ideal current source is a theoretical concept that serves as a valuable abstraction in circuit analysis and design. It represents a source that delivers a constant current, regardless of external conditions or variations. The ideal current source is commonly depicted using a symbol consisting of an arrow indicating the direction of current flow. In this idealized model, the internal resistance, denoted as RSH, is assumed to be infinite, effectively implying that it has no impact on the output current. We symbolize the current provided by the ideal source as I. 
To gain a visual understanding of the characteristics of an ideal current source, let's construct a graph that relates the load resistance, RL, to the output current, IT. By plotting RL on the x-axis and it on the y-axis, we can examine how the current source behaves under different load conditions. Since the internal resistance is infinite in the ideal model, the output current remains constant irrespective of the load resistance. Consequently, the graph appears as a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis, indicating a consistent output current I for any value of RL. This feature is the defining quality of an ideal current source, it can deliver a specified current regardless of the external load to which it is connected. However, real-world current sources possess internal resistances, although often relatively large. These internal resistances have a discernible influence on the output current, resulting in variations. To account for this, we introduce the practical current source, which encompasses the ideal current source in series with an internal resistance, RSH. To represent the characteristics of a practical current source, let's create a graph similar to the one for the ideal source. Here, we plot RL on the x-axis and it on the y-axis. Unlike the ideal model, the output current of a practical current source fluctuates depending on the load resistance and the internal resistance. As the load resistance increases, the output current decreases due to the voltage drop across the internal resistance. Consequently, the graph exhibits a declining slope, signifying a reduction in the output current as RL increases. This behavior arises from the fact that the internal resistance restricts the flow of current, resulting in a diminished output as the load resistance increases. In addition to affecting the output current, the internal resistance of a practical current source also impacts the terminal voltage, denoted as VT. As the output current decreases with higher RL values, the terminal voltage experiences a proportional decline. This relationship can be explained using Ohm's law, VT equals at asterisk RL plus RSH, where the terminal voltage equals the product of the output current and the sum of the load resistance and the internal resistance. Thus, the terminal voltage decreases as the output current diminishes due to the combined effects of RL and RSH. Understanding the characteristics of practical current sources is crucial for circuit analysis and design, as it enables engineers to consider the influence of internal resistance on overall circuit performance. By accurately modeling and accounting for these variations, circuit designers can optimize their designs for specific operating conditions, ensuring reliable and efficient operation. To summarize, while an ideal current source delivers a constant output current irrespective of the load resistance, a practical current source exhibits variations in the output current due to its internal resistance. By comprehending these characteristics, engineers can effectively design and analyze circuits using independent current sources, guaranteeing reliable and efficient operation across a wide range of applications. Welcome to today's video on the Voltage Controlled Voltage Source, or VCVS. In the world of electronic circuits, the VCVS plays a crucial role in allowing us to control voltages at different parts of a circuit using the voltage at another part. Let's start by looking at the symbol for a VCVS. It is represented by a diamond-shaped block with two terminals. This symbol indicates that the voltage across the VCVS, which we'll call VD, is directly proportional to the controlling voltage, which we'll call VC. To understand this better, imagine we have a circuit where the controlling voltage, VC, is derived from the voltage across a specific circuit element located elsewhere. By adjusting the voltage of that circuit element, we can effectively control the output voltage, VD, of the VCVS. The relationship between the controlled voltage, VD, and the controlling voltage, VC, can be expressed mathematically as VD equals KV asterisk VC. In this equation, K represents the proportionality constant. It is measured in volts per volt, V slash V, and determines the sensitivity or gain of the VCVS. Essentially, K tells us how much the output voltage will change in response to a given change in the controlling voltage. By adjusting the value of K and manipulating the controlling voltage, VC, we have precise control over the output voltage, VD, of the VCVS. Increasing the value of K will result in a larger change in the output voltage for a given change in the controlling voltage, 
making the VCVS more sensitive. The VCVS finds extensive applications in various electronic systems. One common application is in amplifiers. By using a VCVS, we can control the amplification of signals based on the controlling voltage. This allows us to adjust the volume or gain of the amplifier according to our needs. The VCVS is also used in oscillators, which generate periodic waveforms. By controlling the voltage that determines the frequency of the oscillator, we can produce different tones and frequencies in electronic music or signal generation. Another application of the VCVS is in filters, where we can adjust the cutoff frequency based on the controlling voltage. This enables us to selectively pass or reject certain frequencies in a signal, contributing to various filtering techniques used in audio processing, communication systems, and more. To summarize, the Voltage Controlled Voltage Source VCVS, is a fundamental component in electronic circuits, allowing us to control voltages at different parts of a circuit based on the voltage at another part. By adjusting the proportionality constant K and manipulating the controlling voltage, we can precisely control the output voltage. This functionality is widely used in amplifiers, oscillators, filters, and many other electronic systems. And that concludes our video on the Voltage Controlled Voltage Source VCVS. We have explored how this component allows us to control voltages in electronic circuits based on the voltage at another part. By understanding the relationship between the controlled voltage VD and the controlling voltage VC, we can adjust the output voltage with precision using the proportionality constant K. The VCVS has a wide range of applications, including amplifiers, oscillators, and filters, where it enables us to manipulate signals, generate waveforms, and implement selective frequency response. I hope this video has provided you with a clear understanding of the VCVS and its significance in electronic circuits. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more informative content. Welcome to today's video where we'll explore the fascinating world of electronic circuits and delve into the concept of a current controlled voltage source, or CCVS. In this video, we will learn about the CCVS circuit symbol and understand how the voltage across it is determined by the controlling current in another part of the circuit. Let's begin by understanding the basic principle behind a CCVS. A CCVS is a type of electronic component that provides an output voltage that is directly proportional to the controlling current passing through a different part of the circuit. It allows us to create voltage sources whose magnitude is dependent on the current flowing through specific circuit elements. To visualize a CCVS, it is often represented by a diamond-shaped block in circuit diagrams with two terminals. This symbol is crucial in recognizing and differentiating the CCVS from other circuit elements. Now, let's focus on the relationship between the controlling current, IC, and the voltage across the CCVS, VD. According to the CCVS equation, this relationship can be expressed as VD equals RM into IC. Here, VD represents the controlled voltage, and IC denotes the controlling current. The proportionality constant Rm is the resistance in ohms associated with the CCVS. Essentially, the CCVS equation states that the voltage across the CCVS is equal to the product of the resistance Rm and the controlling current IC. In other words, as the controlling current varies, the voltage across the CCVS will change proportionally. It's important to note that the resistance Rm determines the proportionality between the controlling current and the resulting voltage across the CCVS. By adjusting the value of Rm, we can control the voltage output of the CCVS. A higher resistance will result in a larger voltage for the same controlling current, while a lower resistance will yield a smaller voltage. The concept of a CCVS finds applications in various electronic systems. It allows us to design circuits where the voltage across a particular component is controlled by the current flowing through another part of the circuit. This feature is especially useful in amplifiers, filters, and other signal processing circuits. To summarize, a CCVS is an electronic component that produces a voltage across its terminals proportional to the controlling current in another part of the circuit. 
By using the CCVS equation, VD equals RM asterisk IC, we can determine the relationship between the controlled voltage and the controlling current. The resistance RM plays a crucial role in determining the voltage output, with higher values resulting in larger voltages and vice versa. I hope this detailed explanation has shed light on the concept of a current controlled voltage source. If you have any further questions or would like to explore related topics, please let me know. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more exciting videos on electronic circuits and components. Welcome to our video on Voltage Controlled Current Sources, or VCCS. Today, we'll explore this fascinating electronic component that allows us to control current flow using voltage signals. By the end, you'll have a clear understanding of how VCCS works and its significance in electronic circuits. Let's start with the basics. A voltage-controlled current source consists of a circuit element that generates a current proportional to the voltage applied to it. This relationship is at the heart of the VCCS and is expressed through a simple equation, ID equals GM into VC. Here, ID represents the controlled current, while VC stands for the controlling voltage. The key factor that determines the current flowing through the VCCS is the conductance, represented by GM conductance is measured in Siemens, S, and is the reciprocal of resistance. It quantifies how easily current can pass through a component. The conductance, GM, plays a vital role in the VCCS operation. Higher conductance values allow for greater current flow for a given controlling voltage, while lower conductance values result in less current. So, by adjusting the conductance, we can control the amount of current flowing through the VCCS. Now, let's understand this concept using an analogy. Think of the VCCS as a faucet and the controlling voltage, VC, as the handle. When you turn the handle, you control the flow of water. Similarly, in a VCCS, when we adjust the controlling voltage, we control the flow of current. When we analyze or design electronic circuits, VCCS symbols and their behavior are crucial. The VCCS circuit symbol typically consists of an arrow representing the direction of current flow, with a voltage source connected to it. This symbol helps us identify and understand the presence of a VCCS in a circuit diagram. Now that we have a good grasp of VCCS, let's explore its practical applications. VCCS can be used in various areas, such as amplifiers, signal processing circuits, and control systems. By precisely controlling the current using an external voltage signal, we can achieve accurate amplification, filtering, and modulation in electronic systems. To summarize, a voltage-controlled current source, VCCS, is an electronic component that produces a current proportional to the voltage applied to it. The current is controlled by adjusting the controlling voltage using the equation ID equals GM into VC, where GM represents the conductance in Siemens, S. This relationship allows us to modulate current flow in electronic circuits and find applications in amplifiers, signal processing, and control systems. I hope this detailed explanation has shed light on the working principles and significance of voltage-controlled current sources. Armed with this knowledge, you're now better equipped to understand and analyze circuits incorporating VCCS. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more informative videos on electronic components and circuitry. Welcome to today's video, where we'll be exploring the fascinating concept of the Current Controlled Current Source, or CCCS. This component plays a crucial role in electronic circuits, allowing us to control the output current based on another input current. So, let's dive in and understand how it works. The CCCS is represented by a specific circuit symbol, which helps us identify and differentiate it from other components in a circuit. You can see the symbol displayed on screen now. Remember, this symbol will be helpful for you to recognize the CCCS in circuit diagrams. Now, let's discuss the relationship between the controlled current, ID, and the controlling current, IC. In the CCCS, the output current, ID, is directly proportional to the input controlling current, IC. This means that as we increase or decrease the controlling current, the controlled current will also change accordingly. To express this relationship mathematically, we use the equation ID equals key asterisk IC. 
Here, k represents the proportionality constant, which is unitless and has the dimension of a slash a, or amps per ampere. The value of k determines how the controlling current IC influences the controlled current ID. By adjusting the value of k, we can achieve different levels of control and amplification. The unitless nature of key is significant because it means the proportionality constant is independent of the specific units of current used in the circuit. Regardless of whether we're working with milliamperes, amperes, or any other unit of current, key remains the same. It represents a pure ratio or scaling factor that defines the relationship between the controlling current and the controlled current. Now, let's discuss some practical applications of the CCCS. One common use is in amplifier circuits. By employing a CCCS, we can control the amplification of a signal by adjusting the controlling current. This enables us to increase or decrease the output current, which in turn affects the amplification level of the circuit. Another application of the CCCS is in feedback systems. These systems rely on maintaining stability and precision by adjusting the output based on specific conditions. The CCCS allows us to precisely control the output current by manipulating the controlling current, thus enabling effective feedback control. To summarize, the Current Controlled Current Source, or CCCS, is a component that generates an output current, ID, which is directly proportional to the controlling current, IC. This relationship is defined by the unitless proportionality constant, key. By adjusting the controlling current, we can control and amplify the output current. I hope this video has provided you with a clear understanding of the CCCS and its functionality. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more informative videos on electronic components and circuitry.